Let's talk about ray interactions. Now, ray interactions can be used for things like grabbing objects from a distance and also for interacting with UI components. In this tutorial, I'm gonna cover how to create a ray interactor and also we are going to be updating to version 2.4 because well, in the middle of creating this tutorial series, it looks like they've released a new version for the XR Interaction Toolkit. So hopping into the project again, I am gonna start off by updating the XR Interaction Toolkit to 2.4. And so we just have to go to Package Manager and if we go into to end project, we can go to the XR Interaction Toolkit, hit refresh here, and if you're lucky, it will just let you update, but I am not one of the lucky ones. For some reason, I've had it work and it allows me to do it and just update from here, but if it's not here, you can also just do it manually. Now, to do that, you just come up here, hit this plus sign, add package by name, and com.unity.xr.interaction.com. Toolkit. Click add and it will search and it should find an update now. And as you can see, it is now updating. We are now at 2.4.1. So it looks like just for now that the 2.4 interaction toolkit just works really smoothly on the 2022 long-term support. Any older versions in, you might get some bugs. So now that we've updated this, we also wanna make sure we update the samples. So you just click samples and click update. Yes, and we'll let that re-import. All right, and so now that that's re-imported, we now have the XR Interaction Toolkit 2.4 ready. And let's get our XR Ray Interactors working. So if we're coming from the Grab Interactables video, you'll know that I put these on to the controllers directly. Now that we're adding more Interactables, I wanna start separating those out because in the future, we're going to have to enable and disable things depending on what interactions are going on. So first and foremost, I am gonna make some new direct interactors and make them childrens of these controller objects here. So I'm gonna come over here, XR and direct interaction or interactor action based. And then we are gonna clean this up. So we already have the controller action based here. So I'm gonna come or sorry, I already have it here in the parent object. So I'm just gonna remove it here in the child object. And then let's see, I think the sphere collider is about the right size. And then for the direct interactor, just to make sure I have everything copied correctly, I'm just going to copy this component and then paste the component here. And so now that that is set up, I'm gonna come back to the left-hand controller and I'm going to remove the direct interactor and the sphere collider. We don't need those anymore. And I'm just gonna copy over and do the same thing for the right controller really quick. Cool, and just to make sure that nothing broke, I'm gonna turn on this grab interactable again. I'm gonna start up the scene and you'll see I can still grab things even though the, the direct interactor is the child object of these controller objects. Okay, enough moving things around. Let us make some ray interactors. To kick that off like before, I'm just gonna right click on the left hand controller and I'm gonna go to XR Ray Interactor. Cool, and so I just made this a child of the left hand controller. And as you remember, the left hand controller action based information is right here. And so this the Ray Interactor will be able to use it. So I don't need this component here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that and let's go over what we have. So we have a few components. We have the XR Ray Interactor itself. We have a line render, which well, as you can imagine, renders the line. We also have an XR Ray line visual, which allows us to adjust more fine tuning. So how it will look. And then we also have a sorting group and that is going to be it for our components. So let's get into the nitty gritty, but yeah, let's boot up and see what we have just with this left ray interactor work. And you can see I can actually pick up these cubes with my ray interactor. So yeah, it's already working, but you know, it's a red ugly line. So we have some fine tuning to do. Now, before we do the fine tuning, let's go over some of these attributes in the XR Ray Interactor. We have the Interaction Manager in charge of all the interactions between our rays and interactable objects. We have an Interaction Layer Mask, so we can make things either work or not work depending on what kind of functionality we want. So for example, Interactable Ignore Ray, we don't want it set to that. We want it set to Interactable. And if you don't have any of these layers, well, that's because I just added these in. You just type them in and you're set to go there. And if we look at these game objects, I've set these two to interactable. 
but this one I've set to interactable ignore rays. So if I booted into the scene, this would not work with our ray interactor. And so, yeah, that's just kind of how that works. We also have enabled interactions with UI game objects. So if we didn't want this to be a UI ray, then we could turn this off. And so it would only be focused on interacting with in-game objects. Force grab is how we grab objects from far away. We also have an anchor control. This one's kind of fun. You can grab objects and move the object up and down using the thumbstick. And then there's a few attributes to tweak there if you want to. We have an attach transform, which you just like the previous attach transform, that's where the objects will attach to. We have a ray origin transform, so that's where the ray will shoot out of. We have a ray cast configuration. We can do a straight line projectile curve, which is good for simulating like throwing objects, and then a bezier curve, and that is typically used for teleportation, which we will cover in a later video. Let's see, we also have the selection states just like the grab, or sorry, the direct interactor. State, state change, toggle, and sticky. And then all our little events here. So you might want to give like a hover event, vibrate the controller a little bit. When it goes over an object the player can interact with, just so they know they can interact with it. We also have a few other things. We have a line renderer component, and then we have this XR interactor line visual. And this is where we're going to start to make the thing a little prettier. So in order to make this a little prettier, I'm going to go through a few things that I like experimenting with, but you should experiment on your own. Starting off, I am going to lower the opacity of this at the tail end, and then I'm going to switch this to one of my blue colors. Let's see. Let's go with this one. And so that will be when a valid target's hit. And this one, I'm okay with it being red. Maybe I'll change it to my pink. Yeah, we'll leave it as red. And then, you know what? Might as well do the same for this one as well. Another nice one to play with is this adjust line or auto adjust line length. So if you click this, what will happen is if it is not hovering over something that it can select, it will then shorten the line. So I'm going to reduce this down to one and I'll show you really quick. If I boot it up, you can see that the line is extended out to the cube and then it recedes when I'm not selecting it, which you know, aesthetically is kind of nice. So I like having that activated. And my absolute favorite thing that they've added is this line bend ratio. I It's so stupid. I love it. I'm going to crank it up to 0.9. If you do one, it will break it. So don't do that. But yeah, watch this. When I grab a cube, I can fling it around like crazy in this line bends. It just feels great. I don't know. I, I It's stupid. I love this. Now, before I press play, I am also just going to add a XR ray interactor onto our right hand, and then I'll boot it up, and so we can compare and contrast what they look like. And you can see that the left one is the one that we have changed a few things on. The opacity is different. The line bends a lot more and is way more fun. And the right one is okay, but again, make sure you polish your line renderers. So yeah, let's get back to this project. Speaking of perfecting and making this even better, in this new update, they added the XR Transform Stabilizer, which is apparently a low latency way of stabilizing our rays. So, well, we might as well tack it on because Unity added it and it doesn't look like it has a high overhead for adding it. So to do that, I'm gonna create an empty child here and I'm just gonna call this left ray stabilizer. Let's see here. I'll just keep this separate for now. And then I'm going to look up the XR transform. There we go. And then it needs a target, which we want it to be the left controller. And next, we should just make sure that we're giving some love over to that right hand controller. So I'm just going to duplicate this and I am going to call this the right ray stabilizer. And make sure I'm targeting the right controller. The last thing I want to touch on really quick, now that we have that working, I am going to make a little tiny UI canvas to show you how to interact with it. To do that, we can just right click, go to XR and then UI canvas. And you'll see this already sets us up to have a canvas in world space, which is where we need it since, well, we are gonna be interacting with it right here in this environment. It's not gonna be an overlay. And then we need to position it to the right spot. I'm gonna zero these out. Lift this up, push it back. And that size is probably way too big. Let's try 10. And you know what, it would help if I had an image. So I'm gonna slap an image on there, go to UI image. There we go. Well, that's a lot easier to visualize. And then 
let's see here. I'll stretch it out to be constrained into the canvas. That is just shift and alt and click there. Yeah, let's get this canvas down. One, one. There we go. That's more like it. And, you know, I'm going to add something just so we can interact with this UI component. And I am going to go with a, you know, I like sliders. Sliders are fun. And I am just going to link the scale down 0 0.005. So it's across the board 0 0.005. And it fits perfectly right there. For the right one, I'm going to make this our UI interactor. And then, so I'm just going to have it not interact with anything. And then for the left one, I will make it so it can't interact with the UI. And so I will just uncheck that. And if we boot it up, you can see my left one, I'm able to grab the block still, but it's not interacting with the UI. But the right one, same thing is it's not grabbing the blocks, but I can move the UI. And so these are the basics of the Ray Interactor. If you found any of this useful, likes and subscribes are a great way to support me as I continue to grow this channel. Big shout out as always to my Patreon members. Without you, I cannot continue to do this and I cannot thank you enough. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.